Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. Welcome back. Jonathan Clark in the studio with Thomas Mars from Phoenix. How are you, man? I'm good. How it's been you? a while, hasn't it? Yes? Yes, yes. Several years. Uh, the new album, I will hold it up here, which is absolutely fantastic, getting rave reviews. It's Ti Amo, which is Italian for I Love You and we love Phoenix here in New York. Uh, you are on tour starting soon. All the tour dates at wearephoenix.com. And you live now in New York, Thomas. So uh, with the wife and kids, tell me what you love about living in New York. Um, I think it's the only city that's the world. You know, it's the only city that's, that it's all immigrants. It's not, there's no, um, so I think it frees you from something from, some sort of weight or responsibility or um, some something you carry from who you're supposed to be or something. So there's something really, um, yeah, really light and carefree about New York, even though I wouldn't imagine that was what it was when I grew up. You know? Yeah, yeah. I thought it would be everything else. The city's changed a lot, especially like Times Square, like the last 20 years. It's now like a theme park, tw uh, Times Square, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I haven't, yeah, it's been a while. I haven't been down that much. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. No, so, but I love, I, yeah, that's why I'm trying to get my bedmates to move. Oh, here. really? Yeah. Are they still in uh, France or? They're in Paris. Um, yeah, they're in Paris. Um. If I wanted to get the best French fruit food in New York City, where should I get it? That's tough because I don't go. The, sort of the first rule you you have when you're, a, I guess, an expat, is you never. I would never go to a French restaurant because I would feel miserable. I f I would feel like a failure. Like I'm not participating, <laughs> trying out things. But then I've been here like maybe nine years now. Yeah. So I do miss. Sometimes a few, um, uh, a few things here and there. Right. But they're never purely authentic. You know, it's always like a Japanese chef that does the best French cuisine in the U.S. <laughs> yeah. it, there's always a, there's always something, and um, and yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice that it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, all French to be great. Yeah. It has to be. It has to go through some sort of distortion. Right. And revisit. Remix. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, I ask this question of a lot of bands. Um, take us back to the time when you were practicing in the basement. I guess it was in Paris, playing some garage rock in the 90s. Um, did you ever think that you would, one, as we were talking about, be living in New York and playing in a Grammy-winning band? Uh, growing up, we were extremely uh, cocky. We were really pretentious, and we thought we'd be the next Beatles. Really? That, yeah, we were. Good for you. We were thirteen, and we thought that's it. Um, so we were pretty much destroying every other path that could lead us to another career. So you were like the French Oasis then. I guess so. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> even though I don't compare myself to Oasis that much, but yeah, I guess we were we were very British in that way. You know, yeah. we are very because every British band when they start, they're the best band in the world, and right. the best. So, and we were influenced by these a lot, and um, yeah, and then um, I think we realized the expectations were so high that we were not amazed, you know, with how the first record did. Uh, we thought it was great. We thought we thought we got to tour all these places we've never been, but we were not surprised or. Um, and then you discover on something else in music, which is you just satisfy yourself with uh, your band, like who you play music with and how you put out records and how you tour and play live shows. And so you set up your own um, sort of your own expectations and not uh, rely on just, um, you know, also being like we have multiple records come, that came out and some did great in some countries, some failed in some countries. So we've had experiences where you go from one place and you have like 
a police escort, you have all these, and yeah. you go to another country and no one cares about you. You play in front of 10 people. Yeah. Uh, and that's the fun of it. That's to go from the high to the lows and back and forth and be all together on this. It makes it really interesting. Right, I can More imagine. More than just being on top everywhere or being, obviously being <laughs> really low everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I watched the video of you guys accepting your Grammy uh, in 2009. I was trying to figure out who the guy was that announced that you won the Grammy for Best Alternative Album. I don't know who that was, but I loved how you guys like literally like ran up to the stage and were like jumping up and down uh, and we're so happy. Just give me like, you know, 20 seconds on what that was like that night. Yeah, it's a big... Um it's a big thing because you grow up thinking that pretty much all awards are stupid. You know, you think that they don't really make sense, that that it's not a competition, it's not a... And then you realize when you get into these things that the, the album was so weird and it was everything was so awkward about it that just the, for the people to announce that the winning album was Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix was a victory for us like it was a thrill and just a, a way to to um seal something just make tell us that we we were not insane you know right, just yeah, tell yeah. us like this was a good idea uh you can do more you know just something nice like this. reaffirming yeah yeah and uh it felt like this and we you know you get into it and you're it's also a relief to win something because you feel like you don't have to you know, it's it's nice for your parents. You just oh, tell yeah. them. You just tell it's them. like graduating from university. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, especially when you're in a band, you don't really have those uh, moments. You you just play a, a iconic venue somewhere, and then you know your your mom thinks, well, okay, that no, that's that's something. We made the right decision. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Thomas Mars, the band Phoenix, and the new album, Tiamo, on tour now. All the tour dates at wearephoenix.com. Getting to this new album, I read a description of it. An album about simple, pure emotions, love, desire, lust, innocence. An album about our European Latin roots, our fantasized version of Italy. A lost paradise made of eternal Roman summers. Hyper light, hyper clarity, pistachio, gelato, jukeboxes on the beach, Monica Vitti and Marcello Mastriani. Fearless Desire and Antique Marble Statues. Does that pretty much sum up the album? This was Bronco, the guitar player in the band, wrote this. Because um, when you finish a record, if you don't write it yourself, other people write it for you. Or, And it felt like, uh, you know, we'd rather express it ourselves and just... Uh, but yeah, it's it was, a, it was the weirdest record to make because we... We were in a studio in the middle of Paris, um, and Paris at the time uh, was extremely uh, gloomy and under all these attacks. And we were right in the middle, but in a in sort of a safe in a studio in a place that was a museum. A, 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 uh, uh, there was a venue there for to see shows. There was an art center, and the whole place emptied. You know, after because people wouldn't want to go out and. Uh, and somehow we made this very hedonistic, joyful music. Um, and the first thing we thought was we'd better explain why this music is so cheerful yeah. and so light because we felt like something was wrong with us the first week. Like there was no... We had the, a lack Bataclan, of, the Bataclan happened, right? Yeah, the Bataclan and then... Uh, and then uh, nice, was nice, it? Nice, was it? Yeah, Nice and... Uh, uh, Charlie Hebdo happened before. Um, yeah, yeah, no. So it was it was really uh, a weird time for Paris and for the world. I think it's not just a Paris thing, right. but it's. Yeah. Um, but so the lack of empathy that we felt, we thought, we, are we in denial? Are we just doing escapism? You know, purely, and um, and then it, yeah, then so we were. It felt like we were onto something, and we wanted to explain the idea of the record and yeah because one could make similar statements about spending the summer in the south of france uh you know south i mean because i i've seen some videos for the new album and i think it was goodbye soleil 
which is Goodbye Sun, I guess, in English. Yeah. But that video, it's cool because it looks like it. parts of it were shot like in the 70s or something. You know, it's got that sort of vibe to it. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, was that shot in Italy or in, or in uh, Paris or in the south of France? That, w- that was shot in Italy. That was shot on a, on a huge camera that had those uh, VHS tape. Oh, so wow. So it was the least discreet. We just took it on with us when we went on holidays, and we looked like freaks because people <laughs> looked like it. It looked like we had a TV show, you know, like carrying it. It was a huge camera. Right. And, um, but it, it, yeah, it felt like the summers that the brothers, which are Italians in the, in the band, lived, and we were reliving some sort of fantasy um, and at the same time creating our memories. So it was a nice... It was a nice way to do a music video because it wasn't, you know, uh, sending, getting treatments for from directors, cool directors like the one of the moment, and you know, it was we were making it ourselves without thinking, uh, knowing that we were going to use this, but we were not sure how. It really uh, came out well. That's good to know. You. It was shot on VHS tapes. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I want to play J Boy from the new album, which stands for Just Because of You. What can you tell us about this song? This was the first song that was good enough and um, to be on the record. And uh, it's the biggest relief when you make a record, at least when we make one, uh, you know, you build this pyramid and you're waiting that there is one and you know it's good and it's awkward enough and it's new. Um, it's going to be on the record. You know you have to put it on the record. And that was that was the first one. So uh, once that one came, you know, it's it's like dominoes. They each each ideas follow and they they Oh, uh, uh, okay, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was the first one. And that is Jay Boy from Phoenix's new album Tiamo here on Q104 Threes out of the box. We're in the studio with Thomas Mars from the band. You've worked a lot with your wife, uh, director Sofia Coppola on lots of films over the years. When you do scores, like the recent film, The Beguiled, where you are writing music for actual scenes as opposed to taking ideas from your brain, uh, is that like a, a like a breath of fresh air? Is it like a nice sort of break from the, your regular sort of writing music creative process? Yeah, it's exactly that. It's recess. You know, it feels like we won the studio. Um, and you're looking at a monitor with scenes, right? Like- yeah, there was a movie theater in the in the studio that we got to uh, use. You know, when it when uh, when it was off, when people when they were not showing movies, so we'd go early in the morning, project the pictures, big and um, and uh, and take notes and just uh, start to think of directions, which was the best. Uh, it didn't feel like work. It was really, uh, it, it happened quick too, because. Uh, and this was happening right when you were finishing the album, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The last. Wow. Busy. Four months, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thomas Mars from Phoenix is with us. Uh, and you also did, uh, I should mention, uh, music for films like uh, Marie Antoinette, Somewhere, The Bling Ring, and Lost in Translation. Um, you recently shot a video for the new single, Tiamo, the title track to the album, which we'll play here shortly. Uh, now, this was really cool because it was in a theater in Italy where Mozart actually played when he was 14 years old. Going back to another Mozart reference, but uh, I saw that video. The place is, that's got to take your breath away. Yeah, it's it's one of these places that you, you know, if you go to Italy, um, you, you, and anything is from, you know, anything has value. And, and it's an issue for them. Like in Rome, they can't even add a subway line because every time they dig, they find some ancient and they stop everything. It's been like 20 years they're trying to build a new. <laughs> so you're stuck with the past. Um, but this place was interesting because it was a theater where Mozart plays as a kid. And then they turned the place into a theater for a real theater, which was um, for, for medicine. You know, the students would come and they do surgery. Oh, wow. And everybody would watch the surgery. Oh, yeah. And once you know this, you're in this place, and it, it's really different environment. And it's, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. It's really a uh, uh, unique place, and uh, yeah. 
His name is Thomas Mars from Phoenix. The new album is Tiamo. Everyone go out and buy it because it's fantastic. And the band is on tour. All the tour dates at wearephoenix.com. Thomas, always a pleasure to have you in here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. New York's classic rock, Q1043.